हेलो एवरी वन एवरी वॉम वेलकम टू ऑल गर्ल्स आई एम एस एस एल कार्तियानी असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर पी जी एम रिसर्च डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इंग्लिश अंड मेरे पैनी आने वाले आर्ट्स कॉलेज फॉर विमेन पैनी तिंडिकल डिस्ट्रिक्ट सो टूडे इन दिस क्लास वी आर गोइंग टू सी अबाउट वन ऑफ दि मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट पोएम्स इन इंग्लिश लिटरेचर द पोएम इज ओ टू द वेस्ट विन रिटर्न बाय पर्सी बाय शेली शेली इज one of the most important and remarkable poets of the romantic period in english literature percy by shelley is a most important person among the romantic poets so there are totally five romantic poets and one among them is shelley who is known as a revolutionary writer he is often compared with the most famous tamil poet bharathiya for his revolutionary writings so percy by shelley has the had the revolutionary spirit since his college days and from there he started a pamphlet called necessity of atheism this poem what we are going to see today in this class o to the west wind also contains an important revolutionary ideal which is very essential for human life we all are acquainted with some problems in our life which make us feel depressed so because of our the problems what we face we always be a pessimistic person in our life so at once or after reading this poem each and every person will get an optimistic uh, hope towards their life and they themselves will change optimistic because the ending line of the poem is such a powerful quotable line which says that if we are facing too much of problems around us why don't we face happiness soon so i'm going to explain the lines in detail in this short video the poem o to the west wind deals about the west wind which crosses mediterranean sea and creates a havoc among the marine organisms and along with that the first part of the poem deals with all these chaos a uh, chaotic uh, situation in the marine atmosphere and towards the end of the poem he has given a such a beautiful optimistic rendering which is very much used for every common man in his life thank you and now the video continues here is the poem o to the west wind by percy by shelley so the first uh, stanza of the poem begins like o wild west wind so the poet calls the west wind as a wild being thou breath of atoms being so it's a wild creature which is the breath of uh, the season atom thou from whose unseen presence the leaves dead so from its uh, presence its presence is not uh, clear to our uh, mortal eyes but the wind is present everywhere and because of its uh, presence even the uh, live dead leaves are driven away from one place to another place those uh, leaves are uh, driven away like ghosts from an enchanted flame so when uh, an enchanter uh, chants the mantra a ghost uh, flies away here and there and uh, it will be in a commotion where to rest and uh, upon whom uh, it will uh, dwell uh, dwelt on so like that the west wind is now in uh, full force and it is in a commotion where to settle upon and the force of the wind causes the dead leaves the leaves worn out from the trees are withered from the trees those leaves are uh, spreading here and there and these leaves and uh, dead leaves and dead buds are taken to various uh, places and those buds are sown in some other places for new trees to spring upon so that he speaks in the next few lines yellow and bl black and pale and hectic red pestilence stricken multitudes so these uh, uh, leaves the varying colors of the dead leaves are so some leaves are yellow some are black and some more some are pale uh, all the color has uh, worn out and the green leaves uh, have uh, become pale 
some have become hectic uh, red dark scarlet red and some were pestered and striken so some leaves were striken uh, uh, by the insects and uh, some worms and uh, uh, some leaves are uh, uh, torn because of the growing uh, worms oh who charities to their dark wintry beds so he has wondered about who is charioting who is the driver of this chariot which uh, where uh, this chariot uh, takes all these uh, be- uh, but the the season uh, the because of winter all the leaves have uh, uh, withered down and uh, who drives upon all these uh, leaves the poet is wondered about that the winged seeds where they lie cold and low each like a corpse within its grave so each seed which is withered from the tree and some uh, leaves sorry some leaves and uh, buds and some seeds uh, will be half alive some seeds will be completely undead and they can't give any new trees and some will be half alive through which uh, uh, even small plants can uh, bloom out so these winged seeds are cold and they are lying cold and very low it is very cheap and mean each like a corpse within its grave so the place where it is seen the where the buds or seeds are seen or look like a grave and he compass the poet shelley compass these dead seeds to the corpse lying inside the grave until thine azure sister of the spring shall blow so he also gives a statement that these seeds will uh, still live inside the grave they will be buried in the grave by themselves and only when it uh, its sister that is the atom's sister spring comes up these uh, seeds will also <coughs> give a, a small sprouts and uh, it will also blossom into a plant and tree and as years pass by it will become a big tree her clarion over the dreaming earth so here uh, her uh, refers to spring clarion over the dreaming earth the spring will come soon and before that now it is atom season so and and uh, during this uh, atom season all this uh, the the, the ch- climate will be very chill and uh, the leaves will be uh, falling from the branches you, you cannot uh, paste these leaves again into the branches so the clarion <coughs> which informs the arrival of the west wind it fills the driving sweet buds like flocks to feed in air with living hues and odors plain and hill clarion means the call uh, the sound uh, blown out from a trumpet or any musical instrument so the clarion call that is uh, given by the uh, season <coughs> it is uh, spread everywhere and it fills the it it gives new odor uh, to the blossoming fruits and uh, uh, the whole plain and even the hills are filled with complete beautiful uh, smells wild spirit which are moving everywhere so here uh, by the term wild spirit the poet refers to the west wind where he has already uh, informed as the west wind is very wild even in the first line we can note that he has uh, quoted that the uh, west wind is very wild once again he comments the same word wild spirit moving everywhere it moves here and there it, it moves all over the world and he calls it both a destroyer as well as a preserver so the west uh, the west wind is a destroyer so destroyer means <clears throat> through the term destroyer he tells that it destroys all the dead and worn out leaves seeds and buds and uh, it, it uh, moves it takes all these and puts into a grave like the corpses are buried in the grave so he tells the same western as a preserver because the fresh or half alive seeds are immersed in the grave and these give life to new plants and buds so trees so these buds give new uh, life to new plants and trees so he calls the west wind both a destroyer as well as a preserver so this is the first stanza 
and to the contrary here in the first stanza, stanza he has uh, shown the west wind as a negative uh, like a kind of pessimistic uh, character <coughs> whereas towards the end of the poem in the last stanza he uh, gives a new spirit new kind of idealism to the human beings he asks the west wind he prays to the west wind to make him make the poet a, a liar and uh, through his words he will spread good ideas to the human being with the help of this liar so he wants him, himself to be made as a musical instrument to be transformed as a musical instrument so with the help of the, uh, that instrument his words will be spread all over the world and it will evoke the revolutionary spirit in mankind <clears throat> so that is what he tells drive my dead thoughts over the universe like withered leaves to quicken a new birth and by the incantation of this verse so he wants to drive his <clears throat> he he tells that his thoughts are dead he tells that his thoughts are dead because uh, there is there are no one to notice his words there are no one to observe his ideas so he wants some kind of in motivational uh, spirit to take his words to the world so he wants this um, west wind to be to act as an agent which will spread his thoughts all over the world and towards the end of the poem the most striking uh, feature of human life is given by shelley the trumpet of a prophecy o wind so he calls the wind as a prophet a prophet is one who tells about the future what will happen in the future a prophet will tell it it's a kind of foretelling a prophet will tell in advance so uh, shelley compares this west wind to a prophet where it will prophesy it will give some prophecy and he ends the poem he concludes the poem with the great striking line if winter comes can spring be far behind so if winter now it's winter season and after winter naturally the next season spring will come so in winter season all the organisms will be very monotonous and uh, they be, they feel insecure whereas in spring season everyone will be cheerful because new flowers new plants will blossom and everywhere it will be very colorful to look over so similarly he compares this idea this idea to a human life if your mind or if your life is completely surrounded by sadness won't you be soon filled with happiness this is a kind of optimistic notion given by shelley thrown into his poem over to the west wind so with this i conclude my topic thank you everyone